Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're talking about the Sig Cross. That's not the cross, that's the fixed by Q, dummy. Here's the cross. This is a bag of trash. Exactly. All right, for all you Sig fanboys, start freaking out. I have never had the cross in my possession. I've never held one, I've never shot one. It was just a joke. I just think it's funny that they copied this, but not the trigger. And there was problems with the trigger. And I had to recall a bunch of them, but hey, it was just a joke. It's not a piece of trash. Yeah. But we're actually talking about this today. This is the Fix by Q and 65 Creedmoor. Well, I'm gonna see where that went, because I need to conserve ammo. All right, so Q's a new company. They started in 2016, but they're not new to the industry. It's ran by a man named Kevin Brittingham, who started Advanced Armament Corporation, ran it for years before selling it to Remington. Went to work for SIG for a short time before starting Q. Now that is a very abbreviated summary of a guy's career that has done a whole lot for the industry, including bringing you 300 Blackout, the Honey Badger, and a whole lot of other cool stuff. The reason I wanna talk about this is if you get online or on forums, social media, so many people talk shit about this guy. Now, I don't know him, I've never met him, I probably never will, I don't know anybody over at Q, I just know what I've seen online. And you don't have to be intelligent or brilliant to see what's going on when they bash this guy. They say he's a dick, he's an asshole, he's cocky. Well, he might be a little cocky, he's proud of the things he's done if you've watched any of his podcasts or heard him talk online at all, but I wouldn't say he's a dick to everybody. The people that he talks shit to or pisses off or they're talking trash about him online are the ones that get online and bash him or the company for no reason, whether it's a rival company or somebody that's actually upset with something. Now, with any product, no matter how good a company is, there's gonna be problems with certain things. And if you run into a problem and you contact these guys, everything you find online or anybody I've ever talked to has said the customer service is great. They take care of you immediately. The people that get online without contacting customer service and say, check out what this piece of shit did and start bashing him or it, he gets online, fires back at him, retaliates, and calls him out for their bullshit. And I think that's hysterical. Most companies don't do that. They're going to kiss your ass so they don't get any bad PR. They don't care at Q. They care about their customers, but they don't care when people get online and start talking trash about them. I think that's pretty cool that a company actually defends itself. So enough about that. We're gonna talk about this bad boy. So I've had this for about two months. I've put about 600, just around 600 rounds through it. I've shot everything from uh, Hornady Match 140 grain, 120 grain uh, grind hard ammo, and a few different things in between. And I absolutely love this thing. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than any Remington 700 I've ever fired. It comes in two calibers. You can get it in 308 or 65 Creedmoor. I have the 65 Creedmoor. I have never shot the 308, so I can't really speak on that either. The only difference is, other than it being 308, is the colored accent pieces here, which are brownish gray, they call it on this. They're blue on the 308. Now you can buy a 308 barrel or a 65 barrel, different lengths. They even make proof research barrels that fit this. And you can do a barrel change on this in seven to 10 minutes, they say. And all you need to do it is one tool that they sell on their website. This is a multi-tool for the fix. It does everything you need. You don't need any other tool to disassemble this completely and work on it. I wish it came in the box with it. I think it should come with it. I understand why it doesn't. It's just wishful thinking. But it does come with two T25 torque wrenches. It's pretty much all you need to do all the adjustments that you need on this. So I don't want to get too in detail on the specs and stuff. I don't want to redone what's already been done a dozen times. Head over to Kit Badger's channel. He did a deep dive series where he went out to queue with the engineer that designed this and builds one and talks about every piece all the way through the video. It's a really cool series. You should check it out. 
So starting in the back, it's got a really nice folding skeleton buttstock. You've got adjustable length of pull and cheek weld. Takes the T25 torque wrenches to do that. You can also adjust the buttstock itself. If I can do it while holding it like this, forward and back or up and down. Now it doesn't come with this buttstock on it. It comes with this butt pad. I'm sorry, not buttstock, butt pad. It's skinny, it's hard, it's not really a lot of cushion to it. So they sell this on their website. They call it their big butt pad. A lot of people complain and say this is too hard. Now, this is what they call a utility rifle. It's lightweight, weighs 6.4 pounds. It's meant to go on your back. You could even throw it in some of the bigger packs out there, hump through the woods, the mountains, the hills, whatever. So they try to make it as lightweight as possible. This isn't meant to sit on a bench and shoot two, 300 rounds every day with it. Can you do it? Hell yeah, you can. It's just not what it's meant for, so they put a butt pad on it that will do the job for what it's meant for. Now, with that on it, shooting at the range up to 150 rounds in a day, I didn't notice it. I mean, it, it kicks, but it doesn't kick like you'd expect a regular Remington 700 uh, 65 Creedmoor to kick. So this will probably go back on mine. I won't leave this on there, but I wanted to try it out for the review. It is nice. It's a little bigger but it does add all that cushion that you might want. It also gives you a bigger footprint to grab onto your shoulder when you fire this thing. All right, working our way up to the folding mechanism. This is a really cool folder. It's simplistic, lightweight, but a lot went into this. This is something I've heard people complain about as well. They say it's kind of hard to do. No, it's not. It's something different. There's none really just like it. The first couple times you do it, it's gonna be a little stiff, but the more you use it, it wears in, it gets easier and easier. And they say the longer you have this, the more it folds as it wears in, it actually locks in and becomes even more stable. All you do is put your hand under the pistol grip, your thumb on top, squeeze, press the buttstock against your body, and it folds up. And you can see the inside of the mechanism basically just has a little uh, hook that goes inside I don't even know what you want to call that. A little uh, canal, if you will. <laughs> but it works really good. It just folds out, locks into place, and it is really sturdy. It looks small like it wouldn't be, but it is extremely sturdy. Going on up, we got just a traditional Magpul pistol grip. Then no need to reinvent the wheel. Simplistic, feels good. You get a Radian Ambi 45 throw safety selector. They used to come with 70 degree safety selectors. I don't know why they went to 45. I'm glad they did. I like the 45. I know on the Honey Badgers, they still have a 70 degree. All right, going up to the bolt. This is another huge complaint on this rifle and I call BS on it. So it actually ships with this bolt handle. It's smaller than this one. They sell this on their website. This is their larger bolt handle. Now the problem people have is they say the bolt lift is extremely hard. Oh goodness. So it's not. It is stiffer than your traditional bolts because it's got a 45 degree throw, but that's only after you fire, like right now it's really easy. When you fire, it's a little harder because that's what's actually cocking the firing pin. Once you've done it once, it's already cocked firing pins back. So 45 degree throw, glides back like it's riding on glass rails. They machined rails into the receiver, kind of like pistol rails for the bolt to glide on, and this thing is so smooth. Now, I've noticed no problem other than the first few times when I got it, having to figure out how to use the bolt with the bolt. It's nice and smooth to me, even with the short bolt on it, and the short bolt's going back on this for me. I think it just looks better, and it does the job. The problem is, when you try something new, you gotta learn how to use it. You can't buy this rifle and expect it to be just like your Remington 700. You gotta learn how the bolt works. So, I like the bolt. Some people have a problem with it. I don't think it's a big deal. Moving on to the trigger. This is probably the nicest trigger you will ever use. It's an in-house two-stage trigger, and there's a couple reviews out there where they say it's the equivalent of breaking a small rod of glass every time you fire it, and oh yeah, it is. I mean, it's just smooth. I 
All right, moving on to the mag release. The mag release is pretty much a traditional mag release other than they've machined their own buttons, so you can't replace this. But the other parts in the mag release, I believe, are off the shelf. Nice design, big, not too big, works just fine. Moving on to the magazines. It takes SR25 mags, it ships with a 10 round mag pull. Some people complain with the 6.5 Creedmoor that they have feed issues with certain magazines. Grand Thumb talked about it in his video. There's a bunch of forums about it out there. I only ran into it when I went with 20 round Duramags. And what I did, they say put a small piece of Velcro inside the mag well. You can also put it on the front of the mag. When I ran the Duramag, I get a little wiggle. Let's see if you can see that. That's a lot more play than I get when I run the Magpul. I ran some Lancer 25 round mags, the Magpul 25 round mags, and then this 10 round mag. I've had no issues whatsoever, not one feed problem, other than the Dura mag before I put the Velcro on it. All right, the receiver itself is a one piece aluminum receiver. You've got Picatinny down the top. Now here is another thing. You can order off of their website different Picatinny rails for the top. I think they sell three different sizes. It comes with the full length. And the reason that I got this one is because I'm doing a review on this Riton Conquer 5 to 25 and I had some small rings I wanted to put on it, but it just barely didn't fit because of the Picatinny rail. So when I got the shorter rail, I was able to put those lower rings on and get the scope down even lower. And I started having issues. I thought it was the scope. Then I thought it was me not tightening it down properly. Then I thought it was the rifle. They talked about it on their podcast last week and it's kind of funny because I figured it out. Well, they figured it out and I'm taking it and throwing it in this video. When they uh, build this, the top rail is supposed to tie it all together and make it more rigid. When you throw this on, it doesn't have all that rigidity tying the receiver in to the handguard. So what was happening when you load it with the bipods, when you're in the prone or at a bench, my groups went from being sub MOA, like everything I've put through this rifle, to about the size of a baseball. And I couldn't figure out why. I just, I swore it was the optic. And I've reviewed a couple of these Rytons and never had any issues. Well, it wasn't. I watched that podcast. I threw the top rail back on and threw this in a night force uh, mount. It's a little higher, it looks just fine though, but now I'm back to sub MOA, even shooting with bipod. Now, with the shorter rail on, when you're shooting by hand, shooting in a tripod mounted close to the receiver, or shooting off a bag, I didn't have any issues. It was only when using the bipod with that shorter rail. So know if you get one of these, and you're gonna switch that out, if you're doing a lot of bipod shooting, you might have some, uh, not accuracy issues, but your shot group's gonna get pretty big. Going up the handguard. This is called QCERT. It is not M-Lock. Now, they do sell an M-Lock handguard on their website you can get and throw on here. This is a really cool uh, way to attach accessories to your rail. Unfortunately, it's just not that popular yet. They make a few accessories for it. You can buy small pieces of Picatinny to mount to it. Uh, the Atlas Bipod, they make a QCERT direct mount for it so you don't have to put Picatinny on like I have on here. But there's not a whole lot out there yet. I feel like it's gonna gain traction. I hope it does. I really do like this. I like it better than MLOX. MLOX is just such a pain in the ass trying to get things lined up and locked in. I've had a couple things fall off with it, but that was on me. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with MLOX. I just think this is pretty cool. They say each one of these points can hold 900 pounds. So it's pretty strong, obviously. You're not gonna have any issues with it. So I'm gonna leave that on there. I'm not gonna to switch to MLOX. All right, so we're gonna talk about the Cherry Bomb. The Cherry Bomb comes on every fix. Actually, it comes on every rifle they make. And I actually love the Cherry Bomb. A lot of people don't like it, but there's certain situations where I wouldn't leave this on there. Now, the Cherry Bomb is a muzzle brake that is meant for their quickie, fast attach suppressors. So the Trash Pan and the Thunder Chicken come with this, or you can buy their Plan B. Their Plan B is just the mounting device that you can attach to any silencer you have. And they've got 1375 by 24 and a few other thread pitches that you can buy off their website. You'll have to head over to their website and check that out. But all it does is screws on to the Cherry Bomb. Now, the nice design with this is they put tapers in front of the threads so your threads don't ever get gunked up with carbon. As much as you shoot this, the Cherry Bomb will turn black, but the threads stay nice and clean. 
If you are not gonna run a silencer on your rifle though, or you're in one of those commie states that doesn't allow it, you might wanna think about changing it out. Now, if you change it out, they do sell an adapter. I've got one, I didn't bring it out here with me, that you can put over the tapered barrel for a 90 degree shoulder, so you can throw any traditional muzzle breaker flash hider on there. This thing works great as a brake. It is just very obnoxious. The concussion off of this thing, especially if you're shooting undercover at a range next to people, you may not like it. So they give you a couple options. You can get that adapter and throw your own on there. You can buy the bottle rocket. Now the bottle rocket is an enhanced brake. It screws on just like their silencers. Now it works great as a brake as well. Um, the concussion is still there a little bit, but it does work nice. My favorite though, is the whistle tip. The whistle tip is like a blast mitigator. It's like the Surefire Warden, I believe it's called. And you just screw it on and it basically pushes everything forward. So if you're gonna shoot in the prone over dirt, you don't want stuff kicking up off the ground. And it throws that forward to where you don't have as bad of a concussive effect that you do off of shooting the cherry bomb. And it also protects your threats. So that's pretty much it. I absolutely love this thing. I think it's definitely worth getting. The last talking point on this would be the price. This is a Gucci ass rifle. It has a nice price tag on it. I think it's worth it. The machining, the engineering that went into this and everything from Q is why it's so expensive and well worth it. This is something that's gonna last a lifetime and I'm gonna pass this down to my son one day. I mean, it's not even my favorite gun though. This is. I got a review coming out on this soon, so. Guys, let me know what you think. you have any experience with Q? Have you been wanting one? Have you been trying to find one? Let's talk about it down in the comments. Have you had any bad experiences with them? I want to hear about that too. Guys, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button to help support us. Give us a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification to get notified when we put out new content. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.